I hope you can stand the viewing pleasure because here's another fun filled episode of Creative Sweet TV. Here, you probably barely see me. Imagine if this is all you could see when you logged on to watch my beautiful podcast. It's terrible. You wouldn't be able to see all the wonderful things around the world. You wouldn't be able to see what was going on. You'd hardly know how to use Photoshop. That is exactly how many, many thousands of people around the world uh, see life. And without the help of the Fred Hollows Foundation, who've helped repair the eyesight of over a million people worldwide then that is how they would go through life seeing that and many people die because of that fact uh, fred hollows has been the fred hollows foundation been restoring eyesight for many many years now and uh, across many different countries australia uh, afghanistan vietnam actually quite a few uh, different countries around the world the Fred Hollows Foundation can restore the eyesight of someone for just $25. So at Adobe uh, Pacific, we're going to go ahead and try and help save the eyesight of some of those people. We're going to have more about that on the podcast in the coming weeks. You'd never be able to see such beautiful things that we take uh, for granted. So this week we've got our tip, which is about selective focus in Photoshop. I certainly appreciate the fact that we can see it. Photoshop really is an amazing uh, tool. And it's true that you can't really uh, believe anything that you see anymore uh, with images because we can change them around that much. This particular exercise we're going to change the focus of this image and we're going to do a selective focus technique that you could normally do in the camera this time we're going to do it within photoshop i'm sure you'll see what i mean in a minute we're going to change the depth of field here on these flowers taken in broom western australia before we do that we have to understand something when we create uh, a selection in Photoshop there's been a number of different tools and you may have already seen uh, over here on the left hand side of screen the quick selection tool it's a brand new tool with CS3 and we could certainly use that to create a selection we need a really smooth edge selection uh, around part of the image that we would like to keep in focus even in this case we could possibly use uh, the old lasso over here so all we do with the lasso tool is simply uh, draw ourselves a selection around the area that we'd like to keep in focus so we could do that or perhaps over here might be a little bit more interesting uh, we'll get that selection there okay if we want to do a true selective focus thing we want to make sure that um, parts of this are in focus some parts are out of focus and some bits in between are sort of in between in focus okay so we need to have a soft edge selection we need to change it or feather it so in the past you you may have uh, changed the feather uh, right at the top here using the feather amount nowadays we don't need to do that we can go ahead and use this over here the refine edge button which is also a new feature so this is enables us and we'll just go ahead and click it to change the feathering as we go so we can say okay there's the feather slider right there let's let's zoom on in all we have to do is drag that to the right to give us our selection more or less of a blur and it's just previewing against a black background we can preview it on white or against a black background and we can really see what it is that we've got selected move that out the way Let's feather it even just a little bit more. So there's a bit of a misconception that this thing only works with the quick selection tool. That's not true. It works with any selection. And as a matter of fact, if I press OK, the selection is still there and I can add to or subtract from it at any stage. What we want to do is save this as a channel. Any selection can be made easily into a channel. Make the selection come down to the bottom of the channels panel here channels panel rhymes 
excellent. Save selection as channel. Go ahead and click it and you will get a new alpha channel. Now don't freak out if you've never done an alpha channel before. It really is that easy. You can even paint on it if you wanted to change this a little bit. All you'd have to do is grab your old paintbrush over here. Nice big brush and I could just tap on that and reduce that away or flip over to white as my foreground color and I could even increase the size of that if I wanted to. A smaller brush or a bigger brush. Change the opacity and whatever you want to do that is going to be our area of focus. What's white is going to be in focus that's right in the middle here and what's black is going to be out of focus. Look at that. Okay. Ignore that for the time being. Come over to your layers and what we'll do is we'll duplicate the background layer and now for the final touch. Filter, Blur and Lens Blur. We're going to Lens Blur here and I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on. The beauty of this filter is the depth map. This is the easily overlooked bit, the depth map. It's going to look and be able to pick up that alpha channel that we just created. Go ahead and click on the alpha channel and then based on what is white and black that will determine what's in focus and what's out of focus. So at the moment it's around the twist isn't it? You can see slightly in the middle here if I zoom in a little bit that the inside is blurred and the background is in focus. Let's switch it around by pressing the invert button. Just wait a second now the flower's in focus and now the background starts to go out of focus. Let's blur it a little bit more. We'll change the radius here and you'll see that the background will go even more out of focus while keeping the foreground in focus. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and press OK. Very excited about this. I think it's a great little technique. Pressing OK. It's a very blurry uh, blur this one so it can take a little while there. And through the magic of Photoshop we have a selective focus image using the lens blur filter. Let's do a before and after just over here on the layers panel and I'll turn the top layer off. That's before. That's after. Congratulations. That looks fantastic. Give it a try yourself. Not a bad tip, hey? Thought you'd like it. Anyway, thanks for tuning in again. Stay tuned because next week I'm going to need your help. I do these tips for free, you know. It's about time to chip in. Stay tuned next week. Really need your help. And I've got a cracking tip for you as well. Absolute beauty. I think, without a doubt, the best tip ever. It's been a pleasure seeing you all again. Have you changed your hair? No, no. Yeah. Let me...